We're testing some ammo that can be identified simply by the product code, and that is quite unusual. The product code is 9BPLE, as you can see, Federal, 9mm, plus P+, 115 grain high shock jacket hollow point. This ammo has been around for quite some time. It has been used quite a bit by various law enforcement agencies here in the U.S., federal, state, and at the local level. It has also been used by civilians for a number of years. It is still manufactured and readily available. Those opening shots were from the Glock 19, four inch barrel. The advertised muzzle velocity is 1,300 feet per second. That's moving along pretty fast. And there are my five shots from an off-camera chronograph session. Take a look at those. And here's the average, if you haven't already done the math. 1,236 feet per second. So I'm coming in quite a bit lower than the advertised velocity, but this is still, for me, in this platform, a very mild recoiling cartridge. Here's a quick overview of three items in the Federal catalog on the far left, the 115 grain plus P plus that we're testing in this video. Notice the size of the hollow point cavity, relatively small compared to the other two. The one in the middle, that is the Hydroshock. I'm sure you've heard a lot about that. That is 147 grains. Notice the larger cavity and the post in the middle. And then on the far right, that is the latest technology, the HST. That in particular is the 124 grain plus P. I would also like to share with you some information regarding SAAMI, Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturing Institute. This organization establishes the pressure limits for ammunition. Working from left to right, standard pressure, 9 millimeters, such as the 147 grain Hydroshock, 35,000 PSI, pounds per square inch. In the middle, the 124 grain plus P, or plus P in general, 38,500. A little bit of an increase there. 9 millimeter plus P plus, what we're testing now on the far right. Question mark because there is not a specification on this from SAAMI. The point is, ensure that your handgun can handle these pressures. It's not my responsibility to check that for you. You own the firearm. You need to check it yourself, preferably with the manufacturer. Next up, a ballistic representation of the 9B PLE using the Glock 19, one shot from 10 feet. We'll be using the SimTest Media that is calibrated to match 10% ordnance gelatin, also includes the IWBA protocol, four layers of denim. Low and left with the Glock. I have a tendency to do that with faster loads for some reason. In any event, it is inside the 20 inch block, no pass through. No, we have not jumped over to a tour of the Colorado River and the Grand Canyon. This is the largest segment of this permanent stretch cavity. I thought I'd give you a different perspective than what I've shown in previous uh, test evaluations. Hope that doesn't bother anybody. If you don't like it, just let me know. and I may or may not change my mind, but in any event, we had the point of entry here. And this, by the way, took about 45 minutes elapsed time from the point of that shot to get you to where we are right now. This was a little difficult, and I'll explain that in detail as, as we go through. Point of entry here, the expansion starts about an inch, inch and a half in, and this really opens up. I peeled away these top layers so you could see all the volume that's in here. This is at its widest point an inch and a quarter wide, runs out to approximately six inches where this stops, this uh, dimension of the cavity. It's anywhere from three quarters of an inch to an inch deep, and that's just, um, just devastating. There's a lot of words I could use, but it's just absolutely devastating and certainly would be a lot of trauma as a result of that. And that may be one reason what we're seeing right here as to why this particular load has very good street credentials. In any event, we're still going forward here. This is at the nine inch mark, and you can see how deep that is there. That's anywhere from uh, three quarters of an inch to an inch. I essentially captured the greatest majority of this track on the right side of my, uh, of my cut through the block. Now there's a piece of the jacket, so we have some disintegration going on and that is at about the 11 and a half inch mark so a piece of the jacket there and then the bullet finally with the leading edge at 13.25 inches and you can see that it has start to come, started to come apart to some extent so we'll take that out and get a closer look but this is why it took me so long to find this you can see all these uneven 
and nasty looking cuts with the knife. When the bullet went in, it went up, then to the right, and then it curved back down, and where that jacket started coming apart, it turned and then stopped. So it started tumbling at some point, and I think it was right there as that jacket broke off. Diameter, there's the high mark, 0.612, but the average is 0.578. 115 grain bullet going in, and the retained weight of the largest segment is 86.2 grains. And then when you add the other fragments I've located so far, total is 114.1 grains. The combination of high velocity and light weight definitely contributing factors to the volume of that cavity that you see in the foreground. With regard to penetration, compared to other 9mm tests in this format, I think this is coming in a little bit below that average. That might be a factor for some folks depending on your priorities, expansion, penetration, and so forth. Not going to get into that battle. One thing that you cannot disregard, you cannot ignore, is the fragmentation jacket separation that is right there in front of you and the degree or percentage of weight retention that we had. So that could definitely be a factor for some folks. We don't know from this format how it would perform against bone. We don't know in this format how it would perform against barrier. So I did not expect a perfect bullet or perfect test with this. Uh, I think we see some positives. We might see some things here that are not so positive. So now you have to decide. Law enforcement still uses this to this day, as do civilians. Are you going to be one of those who uses this cartridge? Thanks for watching.